So in the last lecture, we were talking about um, aligning the uh, optical setup, and uh, we I told you about the optical axis, how the lenses actually define this um, uh, optical axis. So let's say uh, now let's see how if you were to start with right, start from the parts um, where we'll be starting right. With uh, nobody is going to have set it up for you, and I removed these lenses here and kept it down. So the light. Um, you have to start from the uh, first place of the mirror. So the light is coming out from here. You can actually see that light, right? And the light beam travels through here and hits this mirror and this. Now we want that um, light beam that's coming through here to go through the centers of this um, uh, holders, okay? So the um, point is, okay, why don't we actually just, now let's uh, think about a very simple uh, thing here, which is uh, one axis, right? Let's look at the vertical axis alignment. The same, same thing can be applied in the horizontal axis too. So now let's look at the vertical axis. Uh, and you say that, okay, I need to the beam to be at the center here and at the center here, okay? So let's, uh, if you see th this, so I'm going to intentionally misalign it. So now if you see here, um, it's uh, low down here and not that much in here, right? Because what you have done is that uh, we have um, angled it this way. Now, okay, it's uh, now uh, when you put this mirror, uh, when you get the laser out, and I have to place the mirror. So then what do I do? First, um, what I do is first uh, block the laser, laser beam, place it in a, get it as close as to the mirror as possible and clearly, and um, clearly leave, as you are leaving the beam, you have to, cap you should be able to capture the beam, uh, the reflected beam, right? That's the goal here, right? So. Um, you usually we would be doing it from the other side just for the uh, this purpose we are doing it now here but you can actually the principle is exactly the same the way you want to do that is that as you are um, removing the beam so this is the main incoming beam as I am actually removing it I am actually blocking the right beam that's so the light is uh, traveling from this light source all the way till uh, here now now uh, how do we place this and orient this uh, mirror here? So normally we would do it from the other side, but uh, now uh, assume that uh, you have fixed it at that place and that, so then you want to rotate and orient it. So what you want to look at is that you want to trace this light, incoming light, block it and not let it because you don't know where the mirror is um, uh, going to reflect and uh, go as close as possible and start to release this beam where wherein you start to cap uh, the, as the incoming beam is coming your uh, card should be wide enough to capture the reflection can you see the reflection here so we have the incoming beam here and then the reflection here right so this can happen when you are uh, pretty close okay you can it can't happen when you are wider right because either you'll be capturing the reflection or the in so that's why you want to go closer and that's safer because you know now where the mirror is reflecting the beam. Now at that point, as long as you are not there or your friends are not there, then you, you can actually start to place this mirror. And uh, once you place that, again the same uh, argument and you walk, um, uh, you, uh, you take the beam path. Now you know it is going in this direction, so we know um, we are um, safely in the direction, but now what to do with that? So first thing you see is that the beam um, in here is uh, hitting a little bit more on the, the, the top edge than this. So we can actually go ahead and measure um, where it is actually hitting. And um, if you actually look at it, it's uh, around uh, 5, right? The reading would be around uh, 5, right? And uh, here, it's uh, well below 5. It's a 4.5 or so. So clearly, the 
beam is uh, compared to that it is travelling at this direction. So now um, and we also know this point there my where my elbow is right located is also not at the center of the lens. So if you think of um, this representing the light beam like this representing the light beam. Um, so it is not just this it is actually travelling like that. So the I um, um, that is because if you extend it all the way it is coming from the mirror something like that. I am clearly exaggerating but that is that is just to give you the geometrical picture of how, how things are. So now if in order if since it is like travelling like this what we need to do is first we bring it down so that it is hitting at the right place on this mirror then so it will be meeting like something like that then you rotate it. So now bringing it down we call it as intercept in the course and then rotating it back as the slope. So clearly this is not a one time process we have to do it iteratively because um, when you bring it down and then bring it back up you see that the, uh, the, the physical uh, placement of this beam actually uh, moves right. So you know uh, the way we do that is uh, through iterative means and um, so what I am going to do is um, here start um, with this process here. So let us um, go ahead and uh, can I see it? Uh, I um, measure the uh, then uh, is to bring it to bring it up okay what I am going to do is so so we need to know how much we have to bring it up right so let us go ahead and measure where this center is so that center is pretty much close to 5 okay uh, so if you look at it uh, we are little down here so I am going to bring it up. So bringing this up here is actually an intercept. Again uh, what you want to do is you want to actually do it uh, straight here. I, I uh, Ideally what you would do is an aperture. You put in an aperture but then um, here what we are um, for uh, better visualization purposes we are actually doing this uh, but the idea remains the same. So, uh, so to get that is and movement on this mirror so that is equivalent of our intercept right intercept being moved here now that is close to 5 and that moves the uh, beam on where this uh, I mean where the beam is hitting on this mirror. Now if you look here um, so it is uh, slightly more than 5 so what we are going to do is uh, see that is what you would have expected right. So because uh, the beam was going in like this now and then hitting it lower so we brought it up okay and uh, so what you have uh, 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 done is that you are uh, reaching it um, below where you want to actually reach it. Now it is and I am adjusting this so I go slightly above 5. And uh, since it is an iterative process I know so then once we go there and then at this point actually you are pretty good. Um, so you have to do it a uh, few, few times and when you do it few times then you can uh, once you see that you are uh, pretty close to um, the same um, place both at a distant place and near place to the last mirror you know that uh, your, uh, uh, your straight line is met right because uh, straight line is going like this right. So we did that for the vertical axis and a good test of that is when you actually put in a lens in its path right please note where the beam is hitting. When you put the lens in its path um, you should see a minimal movement of its position. I actually should not see any movement of its position and that is exactly what you see. 
So with and without lens you see that uh, the beam nicely makes it through the, um, the aperture that we have put in. So and of course I mean since it is uh, already pre-made it, uh, it got done uh, quickly but uh, also video we can't I mean it is a lecture that we can't keep uh, shooting how many times we keep uh, iterating. So but the rough idea I hope that uh, you would have gotten of uh, how we actually go about doing that. That is one that is only in one axis okay. You have to do it on the other axis too. When you once you do that and uh, what you have is this uh, uh, nicely aligned beam. So now what we are uh, doing or going to do is that align the telescope right. Uh, the tel telescope alignment requires that the beam is um, traveling straight as well as the distance between the lenses alright or um, f1 plus f2 the sum of the two focal lengths okay. So to do um, so to do that the cage assembly is really really helpful even the rails are very helpful why because we can uh, as you can see this is called as a cage assembly because it uh, this is slightly different from the post post holder assembly um, uh, thing it is actually uh, what we are doing is we are using the post post holder to hold the cage assembly. What do we mean by cage assembly? Uh, you have these rods right these rods govern um, the way in which the or the relative positions in which the uh, these plates are called put. These are called uh, cage plates and uh, now the benefit of this is that it ensures that all of them the centers are all aligned. They are all uh, co con uh, co-centric right and uh, now when you have that then um, this is a very useful thing to have because uh, if you want to adjust the focal length and while you are moving it uh, back and forth something like what I will be doing here, you do not want the um, beam to be um, travel uh, uh, hitting at the lens at a different place. Imagine the lens, uh, the beam had to be coming at an angle like that, right. So depending on whether you are meeting the lens here or placing the lens here, either the beam will be hitting at the center or away from the center. So we do not want that. Now that is been ensured by us making sure that the light actually goes through this center of this um, cage assembly and we, we checked it by putting in the lens and making sure it is going through and uh, going through without changing the um, its path. Then what we do is that we put in the uh, <coughs> lenses okay. So again the way you do that is uh, you block it and now when you do this you will see that the first thing you will see is that it is an incoming beam is collimated beam. So you see that is where the focus is alright. So the focal length of this lens is Uh, 50 mm okay. So now you can see that uh, this is roughly at this place right it is uh, hitting at this place and from here to here there are two holes at 50 mm and that is where you see the focus uh, the light coming into focus um, <coughs> and it is diverging right and uh, again it is uh, nicely centered onto that um, uh, the beam that we have put in and uh, the aperture that we have put in. Now we can actually place the second lens alright same way and this second lens this uh, this lens is about 35 mm. So as I was telling you in the previous lecture we are putting in this telescope assembly just to ensure not to, so much of magnification many times we would do it when we go to infrared beam and ultra fast laser in setup we will see that you have to expand the beam but here we are actually making sure it is collimated and um, for this collimation what we are uh, doing is we are using a 35 mm um, lens. Now this 35 mm lens actually uh, 
if you see it's going to focus shorter at this distance and then it expands and uh, at this point you actually see that uh, uh, you need to be able to um, if you go here it's a very fastly diverging beam you want to see and at this point you see it's uh, again still diverging and you keep going until a point uh, where right now we reach the physical uh, limit of that space so we're going to I'm going to tighten this in place and what I'm going to demonstrate to you is that at some there will be a point at which you start to see it's uh, start converging Uh, all right so when we start moving you can actually see it's uh, changing its uh, behavior so that behavior is true Um, at a point sum of uh, these two being uh, 85 right so you would uh, see it's about slightly more than three uh, holes so that's the first hole 25 50 75 and if you see here that's where it is somewhere in between so you could um, lock them down so that would um, complete our uh, alignment of uh, the incoming beam and adjusting the size such that it is a collimated beam that uh, comes through this lens and then focuses it on uh, onto the fiber. So uh, this is a very simple thing where uh, you want to couple it to the uh, fiber end. But many times what happens is that uh, you're not uh, coupling it to a fiber end, but uh, you are focusing into your sample and uh, trying to get, um, so often uh, what happens is that uh, instead of this fiber end, what we will be putting in is your sample and uh, we'll be measuring the emission or scattering or something associated to that. And in fact, um, one of the usefulness of this card is that uh, when you are wearing the goggles, then you don't s see the uh, incoming laser light, but you can see the fluorescence originating from here. So, um, so since I'm going to talk to you about the emission path now, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to turn off this laser. And um, here, what we... Uh, going to do is that we're going to place uh, a fluorescein solution okay we're going to place the fluorescein solution then i'm going to show you um, the fluorescence um, elicited by the blue light focusing through this lens and uh, we are going to build a small spectrometer okay in this part and to um, tell you that you can actually see this emission and uh, how the spectrometer works okay so that will that we will see uh, right off